everyone, and thank you for joining us today at the Tommen Museum of Art for this Art Spotlight. My name is Katrina, and I have with me Dr. Patrick Shaw Cable, Chief Curator and Deputy Director of Exhibitions and Collections. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. Um, so we're going to be talking about this particular piece within our permanent collection. It's called On the Towpath, A Halt by Theodore Robinson. And so, um, Patrick, I'm correct in thinking that Theodore Robinson was an American Impressionist, right? Yes. Okay, so what does it mean to be an American Impressionist as opposed to a French Impressionist? Of course, Good he's question. American. Exactly. And he did study in France after studying with Art Students League. He went to France, studied with Claude Monet, and became very close with him. So a lot of the Americans did that. They would go over to France, learn the latest style, uh, which was Impressionism, and be, uh, become really inspired by it. But often, when they came back, they would tackle American subjects, some more consciously than others. But for example, if you think of French Impressionism, most of the artists were working in and around Paris. So you had either cityscapes or suburban scenes near the city. Whereas these artists, the American artists, might look at a farm or look at a garden in a rural area of Vermont, for example. So this sets it apart in terms of the subject matter, more of a rural subject matter here in America. Mm, fantastic. Um, talk a little bit about some of the Impressionist details that you kind of see in this painting. Sure. And it's funny because when does this date from again? Um, it's 1893 to 94. Interesting. 1893 to 94. So this is actually two decades after Impressionism had started. Impressionism started in the mid-1870s in France. It's late the game. Yes. <laughs> so by then, it's interesting, you might see more than one approach through the Impressionist style. But, for example, Monet, late in his life, he started doing his water lilies that almost become symbolist and abstract. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, everybody's familiar with the water lilies, yeah. But you asked about elements. I would say, for example, these shadows, mm -hmm. or the depiction of light hitting foliage up here. You see sort of the blue, violet, gray shadows. So the artist is really interested in, in the actual colors that light can take on when you really observe it in nature. And then on the left, too, you really feel like light hitting foliage. But then I feel like here, the denser foliage that's mm -hmm. very dark green, this almost becomes more symbolist rather than sort of describing light. In my, it almost feels like it's more interested in, he's more interested in using those broad brushworks to suggest the density of the growth. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting, more symbolist mm -hmm. use of a broad brushwork maybe, and then a more uh, realist kind of uh, interest in the way the, the light interacts with foliage there. That's so interesting. I think, to me, it is, it's such an idea to be able to look in nature and see all of these minuscule colors within yes. the light, because you don't normally think about that when you're looking at it. So no. I encourage you, all of you at home, if you're out on a walk today, kind of observe the light a little bit and maybe see if you can pick up on some of those violet hues right. or um, these colors that the Impressionists just sort of we're able to see. Um, another thing that I really love about this painting is the change in his brush strokes. Um, so you mentioned here he's got a, a larger brush stroke in the darker foliage, but the brush stroke on the horses and on our boy here are actually very, very thin, longer strokes, which is very interesting to me because it creates a whole new texture. Yes. Um, it tells us something different about the painting. Very and there too, I think it's interesting how Impressionist brushworks can be used in so many different ways. I feel like here the artist, as you said, they're thinner brushwork, but I think it really shows his skill. Even when you get really close, there's a lot of broad brushwork or, or loose mm -hmm. handling, but it really comes together at a certain distance to, to describe a very naturalistic scene. And for me, I've always seen Impressionist scenes as being um, very static for the most part. And here he's given us a little bit of movement. It's almost like he's yes. suggesting to us that the tail of this horse is moving, whether by a gust of wind or maybe swatting away the flies. Yes, that's um, true. Which is, which is a really interesting um, showing of his talents in this way. And this is a really nice detail too, or the details the little highlights of blue and light green and white and on the cap in yeah. the face. 
that's an interesting vision of a young boy's face in shade under his cap, but in an overall ambient, really brightly lit. So you see how it's really catching and making his face glow yeah. with the sort of reflected side shadows. What a fantastic piece of yes. American Impressionism in the museum's permanent collection. And this was acquired as part of the Freyland Trust, correct? Right? Yes, the Horace G. Freyland Charitable Trust, um, which was a, a, a great yes. um, institution that has really been... Uh, Helped build a core of our collection. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So thanks to them um, for their hard work and, oh, and yes. for allowing us to have this. Thanks for joining me today, Patrick, and thank, thank you. you, friends. Yes, thank um, we'll you. see safe. you next time.